Hello and welcome to uh, this part B of this problem. We've already gone through and done the ANOVA here. Uh, and so now we have found in the ANOVA exercise, we found that we had sufficient evidence here to reject uh, the null hypotheses. And so what this means uh, is that we have evidence to show that not all of the means uh, in our population here are equal. So of course the next question is, well, where's the difference? So this is where we perform these Fisher's LSD exercises, uh, least significant difference, uh, to identify where the difference exists or which of our treatments uh, is coming from a different distribution. So what we're going to do here, uh, I'll, I'll write out our three sets of hypotheses that we're going to be testing because now we're going to be looking at all of the possible pairs uh, of treatments. So for us here, We've kept it simple by having only three treatments. So for the first one, we'll compare population one and two and say, well, those two are either equal or they're not. Uh, we'll then look at the second pair. So that would be population one is the same as population three, or it's not. And the third pair, uh, is that population two is equal to population three or not. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we'll perform all of these tests at the 05 level of significance. Um, and here we'll perform uh, the t-test approach. So we've, uh, I think in a previous video where we went through the Fisher's LSD exercise, we used what I call the confidence interval approach. Uh, here we'll use the uh, t-test approach. So what this means is we have to calculate a test statistic which will be very similar to what we've seen uh, in module 10 when we're looking at all of these um, two sample tests. The only difference here is that our estimate of variance now comes from the ANOVA. So our estimate of variance here is going to be uh, MSE. Otherwise the rest of this uh, should look I think fairly familiar rejection rules and all this are no different uh, from any other two sample tests that we've done. So we need to calculate three of these test statistics, one for each pair, uh, and then we'll have different conclusions for each uh, pair, and then hopefully in the end we'll have enough information that we'll be able to um, isolate uh, any one or two that are in fact different. Now. In fact, the nice thing, these simplified exercises that, um, that we do by hand, I've only got three treatments, sample sizes are small. For the most part, you can probably look at the sample data that we have here and make a pretty good educated guess uh, where the differences lie. If we have many treatments uh, of very large or, or very different sample sizes, sometimes that can be harder to see just by looking at it. So as much as you might look at the sample data and say, Peter, why do we need to do all these tests? I can just look at it and I can tell you where the difference is. Fair enough. Uh, here, we're keeping it simple. We'll go through the calculations and worst case scenario, we'll confirm your suspicions. So let's get through this and uh, we'll, we'll calculate here our test statistics, one for each pair. So for the first one, I'm comparing populations one and two or treatments one and two. So I'm looking at these two means here. So this is 5.2 minus 5.4 divided by our MSE. We steal that from down here, 0.15. We'll also need these degrees of freedom for the T distribution. So MSE point, oops, point 0.15. Let me just scribble this over here just to be safe and its degrees of freedom was 15 for our t distribution and this is 1 over 5 and 1 over 6 All right those are our two sample sizes for those two uh, for those two populations those two treatments sorry so let's uh, oh, where'd my calculator go looks like I closed it by accident there we go okay so 5.2 minus 5.4 equals divided by, uh, open the brackets, 0.15 times, open another bracket, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 6, close that one, close that one, take
take the square root of that one, and we have our final answer negative 0.85. Oops, I forgot the point. Negative 0.85, okay. So then we can go to our T distribution and we want 15 degrees of freedom. Uh, let's just find an approximate P value here. So here we'll have oh, some scribbles. Uh, oh, that was exactly what I wanted. I just erased all that. So here's our degrees of freedom, here's 15. Our test statistic was 0.85. It was negative 0.85. These are two-tail tests, so we can take advantage of the symmetry of this t-distribution. Uh, so here I have 0.85, so that's in between these two values here. So our probability is 0.2 and 0.25. Two-tail test, so our p-value is double those probabilities. So our p-value is going to be between uh, 0.4 and 0.5. So if we come back here, our p-value for this one is something less than, uh, what am I doing, less than 0.5, greater than 0.4. It's a little bit cramped in there. I don't have a lot of extra room. So nonetheless, we can quite comfortably uh, not reject. We certainly don't have evidence to reject that and all the p-value is larger than 0.4. Uh, no evidence whatsoever here really to, to reject it. So one and two are, for all intents and purposes, the same, or certainly they are not different. Let's uh, go through to the next one. So the next one now we're comparing treatments one and three. So for this calculation, let me just change my ink, because most of the parts of this calculation are the same. Uh, oops, 5.2 is still relevant. But now I'm comparing that against 5.8. Uh, the first treatment with the mean 5.2, that's five observations. But now that second one with the mean of 5.8, that one had seven observations. So that's all we have to change in our calculation here. And then we can crunch those numbers. 5.2 minus 5.8. And then divide that by, uh, open that bracket, 0.15 times 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7. Close those brackets, square root it, equals 2.65. Okay, so there's our test statistic for the second one. We can go to that t distribution. Still 15 degrees of freedom, 2.65, so that's out here somewhere between these two. So now these are our relevant probabilities, two-tail test times those by two. So our p-value now is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. So p-value for this one is less than 0 0.02, greater than 0 0.01. So this one we can quite comfortably reject. So one and three, I have evidence to show that populations one and three are different. Last one, number uh, part three, or the third hypothesis, we're comparing populations two and three. So again, let me just change my ink. So now I'm looking at, my goodness, what's my, what happened to my eraser here? There we go. So now we're looking at 2 and 3. So in this formula, 5.8 is still relevant, but now this is 5.4. That sample size of 7 is still relevant for the one treatment, but now this one is 1.6. Okay, so that's all there is to that one. And let's calculate this. 5.4 minus 5.8 equals, divide that by 0.15 times 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7, close those brackets, square root it, equals 1.86. 1.86, coming back to our t distribution, 1.86 is in here, 
So my two probabilities are here. Again, we times these by two. These are all two-tailed tests, so that's between 0.05 and 0.1. P-value here is between 0.1 and 0.05. So this one we do not reject. Okay, so we have two do not rejects and we have one reject. So what does this mean? One and two are the same. Two and three are the same, but one and three are different. So we have sort of mixed messages here. One and two, this is one of the funny things about statistics, is that transitivity doesn't always hold. We know in mathematics, if A equals B and B equals C, well, we know that A must be equal to C, right? That seems quite obvious. In statistics, that's not the case. Here we've shown that A equals B, right? This is this one, A equals B. I've shown that A is equal to, A is not equal to C. That is this one. And here I've shown that B is equal to C. So how can these two how can these two all be equal if, oops, let me scroll down a little bit. If A and C are not equal, so A and C are not equal, but both A and C are equal to B. <sighs> so it is what it is. Here we've identified that one and two, or sorry, one and three are sufficiently far apart that I cannot say those two are, are statistically identical. However, one and two are close enough together that they can be identical. Two and three are sufficiently close that they can be identical. So that's all that we can say here. One and two are this, are, I can't say that they're different. Two and three, those ones are not different. But one and three are far, far enough apart that they are different. So type three glass, it does withstand the shaking of an earthquake uh, longer than type 1 glass. That's what I can say. And type 2 and 3, I can't say that they are statistically significantly different from each other. But I can say that 3, uh, 5.8 in that sample, that does give me enough evidence to show that it is lasting longer than type 1. But I can't say that it is lasting longer than type 2. Okay, so that's a little bit of a tricky result, um, but this is what we're looking at in statistics. It's all probability, it's all magnitude of evidence. It's not, uh, not as simple as discrete mathematics. So hopefully that all helps. Hopefully that makes some sense, even though that final conclusion isn't clear cut. Uh, it's, uh, sometimes those are the results that, uh, that we find here. Okay, good. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.